to River City Live. Another cold day, not just here in Florida, but obviously all over the United States. <laughs> Everybody's talking about it. You go on social media and you see all these funny memes, but it is ridiculous just how cold it is. Oh, it's way ridiculous. And you're a Florida girl, so I'm sure this is brutal for you. Oh, this is brutal for me, but they are laughing at us, complaining <laughs> in places like where my friend lives, Wisconsin. And I saw him throwing hot water in the air and watching it turn to dust. I think we've all seen these videos all over the place. But yeah, the polar vortex is what we're talking about. And in some places, it's colder than Mars. Yeah. Colder than Mars. It's crazy because when you look at that map, so like the temperature high is like in the negatives, mm -hmm. but then the wind chill is twice that. So it's like negative 50 across the Midwest, and that's where most of my family's at. So they keep giving me grief, like, oh, how bad is it there? And I'm like, well, I don't know if I'm going to be wearing open-toed <laughs> shoes today. Or, you know, but, things uh, like, but you're on the fence. Yeah, I mean, exactly, yeah. Even... Might sweat a little bit if I have a sweater on, but we'll see. I got <laughs> long not. sleeves, but I don't have layers like you do. I sent them the picture that it's a 100-degree difference between Florida and the Midwest. <laughs> they didn't like that. I don't but doubt. But schools have been shut down. A lot of places where you commute to work, they're like, don't even come in. For cars, it's really hard for them to start. They even say there's a warning to breathe. When you start talking, yeah. you get that in your lungs, it's bad to do. Yeah, so, there's serious crazy. concerns for homeless people in these areas because, you know, they're exposed. And I mean, we're, some places like automatic freeze bite as soon as you walk out the door, depending on how, the wind chill. Yeah, and that's the other thing too. You know, you could cover, you think you're covering everything up, but it's almost impossible to. And if that's exposed, it goes numb so you don't feel it. Then before you know it, you know, basically it's dead tissue on your body. It's so interesting the things that we don't know we don't know when we're from Florida. So I didn't know the all the aspects of frostbite. Yeah. Didn't know that. Once I was in uh, up north and somebody handed me an ice scraper and it had like um, radio call letters on it. And I didn't know what it was. <laughs> I had no idea. I mean, I'm just saying these are things yeah, that yeah. It, it, when you grow up in Florida, you just don't know everything there is to know. And it is, like you said, very dangerous. One of the best things, I, I saw this meme, and back in the old days, you know, you didn't go on the internet to find out information, it was just TV. And it was like the NFL draft, your school would scroll at the oh, bottom, yeah, yeah, if yeah. it was closed or not, you're like, come on, come on. You're like, what? School Why closing so lottery. Exactly, <laughs> yeah, it was like the best to see. And it's in alphabetical order, so. There's a shot of Wrigley Field in Chicago. Actually, I used to live about six blocks from here, but uh, yeah, it looks pretty cold, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. Well, don't <laughs> Not a lot of people out. It kind of looks blue. Like the whole place just looks blue. Um, that's that's pretty intense. Oh yeah. Well, it's interesting. Florida has actually reached negative temps before, but that was like a uh, hundred and forty years ago, eighteen ninety nine. We did. Tallahassee so was how negative was two. Eighteen ninety nine. So some it's some, yeah, exactly. Some guys out there are like <laughs> a weather beetle. Chuck's pretty good at this stuff. <laughs> We're in the negatives. Well, police in Priceville, Alabama, and Noblesville, Indiana, where I actually have family through my husband's side, but they have actually issued this mandate. It is too cold <laughs> to break the law. They banned crime. For real, they put out messages saying it's just too cold for you to do anything illegal, so don't be stupid, they said. And then did you also see that this governor in Kentucky that said, uh, no, we are not closing the schools, and Al Roker called him a ninny. Oh, strong word, ninny. I know. So there's some options here if you want to stay indoors and be cool, right? Yeah, kind of, yeah. sort of, right? Sort of. So you could go check out the Jack's Iceman. That's something to do, so bring the ice inside, <laughs> right? So you can't escape it. They actually have a game coming up. It's the Faith and Family Night. It's this Friday, and hockey is one of those things. It is just so cool to watch. There's a lot of action. Now and then you might even see a little fight. Who knows? <laughs> but the thing about hockey is, like, I, I didn't grow up with it, but then when I was introduced, it was like, oh, this is interesting. But going to a game, mm -hmm. oh, it is so such an eye-opener and such a rush. And when the crowd is into it, yeah, it's a good time. I love a sport that it's just easy to follow. I mean, it's just so clear, <laughs> you know? Like, it's very much like basketball and soccer and everything like that. I mean, you you just can watch it and not know anything about it. I mean, the one, I, the one hockey game that I went to where I couldn't figure out why there weren't quarters, isn't it? Like three, <laughs> three periods. Three periods? Yes. yes. So there's little things that I didn't know about. But for the most we part, got this in the fourth quarter. Come on. We're over. Boys, Rally. Plenty of time left, boys. You've got yeah. this. 
What do you mean? Oh, go ahead. No, in serious. Shoot the three, Johnny. <laughs> Shoot the three. I'm in seriousness, though, I'm saying, like, at least I can follow it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, if you go to a, if I went to go see certain games, I don't think I could follow it so well. Like rugby, I don't know much mm. about. Kind of thing. Well, we definitely we'll do an outing where we go see oh, yeah. hockey, and we'll yeah. do our best because I'm not a big hockey buff, but I think I know, I know what happens. You get yeah. the, the puck in the net, and there's yeah, a point. In the net. <laughs> but there was a little clip there's in there of somebody the flossing. You know who that looked like? Uh, one of our uh, social media people, uh, Garrett Pelican. <laughs> Garrett, you were flossing. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure if anybody at home knows that, but that's all right. We'll introduce you. You'll have you. to trust Grant. I didn't see it. But uh, building four two nine, they're a Christian rock band. So right after the game, they will be playing. And again, it's faith and family night. So maybe there won't be any fights. Maybe people are in their best behavior. To learn more, go to JacksonvilleIceMen.com. All right. So from hockey, let's talk about athletes. And you know who some of the best athletes are. Kids. They definitely are. Yeah, without a doubt. It, people always say that, like, do they ever run out of energy? <laughs> and they don't. This is backed by science. There was a study where they took kids, and I believe the ages were between like 8 and 13, and they squared them off against high endurance athletes and then average people as well. And they recover and outperform better than both groups. So oh, high yeah. endurance athletes and just regular people. It's absolutely amazing. They did something called the Wingate. I don't know if you guys ever seen this, but basically it's kind of like one of those bikes, but you move your arms mm -hmm. and there's resistance. Mm -hmm. So you go all out for 30 seconds, you stop and you do it again. So for like really good athletes, they had about a 41% decrease in performance. Kids only 35% decrease. So it's pretty amazing. You're an athlete. And I wouldn't you, say that. Well, no, you are. You Was. and you have you have kids that are athletic. So yes. do you, how much of that do you think is mental? In other words, they don't know that they should be tired. We have a preconception like I did all this work, I'm pooped. How much of it is in their head? Depends on the kid because yeah. at home I have a very like good sample population. But that's an excellent question because one of the things they were talking about, if you do have an athlete in your house, you don't necessarily have to condition them because they're already conditioned. So work on the skill. So let's say if it's soccer, you don't have to necessarily have them run miles and miles and miles at that age. Practice your footwork or things of that nature. Huh. You know, so it just it's the way that they process things. It's the way that they recover. I mean, they're young. You know, I would so. like to have a few discussions with my coaches back in the day for all of those conditioning drills that I did unnecessarily. <laughs> well, I think I think too though there is something mental that if we could just you know put our hands on their heads and just <clears throat> get it in there. But anyway, yeah. 